Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Food preservation in the Old West. Let's look into it. Yeah, so the 19th century frontier had no refrigeration. GE and Maytag weren't around then, so pioneers had to preserve foods to last longer. Sure, there were ice houses where frozen slabs of lake were shipped to certain parts of the country to keep things cold, but by and large, perishable items had to be preserved or get eaten quickly. We've talked about some of this before on the channel, but it's been a while, so let's look into it further. Preserving meat in salt has been done for thousands of years. Sodium draws the water out of the meat, slowing the decomposition so it will last for long travels. Such large amounts of salt was needed to preserve certain foods that it hardened the texture of the meats and reduced some of the nutritional value. It could also lead to scrofula and scurvy. Alas, these scurvy dogs. He be boarded by the famous Captain Bill Brazil. Really? In fact, it was suggested soldiers boil or steep bacon and salt pork to get a good amount of that salt off. Boric acid did not have these adverse effects on foods and was another popular preservative. At the turn of the century, however, its use was disputed. Scientific studies showed that over 60 grains of a boric acid preservative could cause nausea and vomiting. Most foods being processed with it didn't have near that amount, but still, it was a thing. Meats like sausage could be preserved in saltpeter, or potassium nitrate, which also protects them from the botulism bacteria. Speaking of sausage, smoke houses were prevalent in the Old West. Smoke, yet another preservative, adds not only a unique flavor to cooked meat, but provides a coating to inhibit bacteria growth. Teas and herbal medications like Yaupon, Bohia, and Mistletoe were dried and sealed in corked bottles for long travels. Pinole is a nutritious and filling drink mix that was made with toasted corn, flour, chocolate, and cinnamon. It was carried by Native Americans and Mexicans on horseback or on foot, and could be mixed with water, milk, or juice to sustain one in their travels. In fact, tribal messengers would take pinole on their journeys, and it would fuel them for dozens of miles on foot. Another Native American preserved food was pemmican. A wonderful bird is the pelican. Its beak can hold more than its bellican. No, pemmican. Oh, whatever. It consisted of dried meat, rendered fat, and dried berries. Sometimes even honey, another preservative, was added. Mm. Get the honey, Junior. Give him the honey, Junior. This was something highly valued during the fur trade area, and was also used by the U.S. Army up until about World War II. Once set up, it could be carried for months. So, that's the dried stuff. The first canning factory in America was started in 1812, and from then on, people making the trek west, or those already settled there, had a variety of fruits, vegetables, and proteins in compact tin cans. These were also very helpful in small mining camps, forts, and on trail drives. Cheese was coated in wax and eggs and lard, which could prolong the life of some of these goodies. We're certainly not done speaking about foods of the Old West, especially since food is one of my favorite subjects. You can bet we'll see more in the future. Be nice. Be he knows nice. you. Be nice. Oh yeah, he recognized your smell just like that. Well folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. It also could lead to scryufia, scrofula. Where are you? I know.